Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all here, or not see you, as the case may be. Uh, there we go. That's me. Hi. I am Sarah Zucker. You may know me as the show, or you may recognize me from my fabulously ostentatious profile picture that was painted by my spouse, Bronwyn Lundberg. I am an artist who fuses cutting edge and technologies into a dimension of my own imagination. So, what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, it looks something like this. Um, <laughs> this is my cat. <laughs> She's famous now, which is kind of fun. Uh, my work could be described as digital analog video visions, which refers to this sort of interesting process I've come up with over the years, where I take uh, original footage and animation, and I run it through this system of vintage video devices I've accumulated that I call my video altar. Um, one of the cool things about my work is that it actually all gets manifested physically onto VHS tape before it returns to the digital realm. So you may ask yourself, why? <laughs> why VHS tape? And that's a good question. I ask myself that question sometimes. And, you know, I've thought a lot about it, and beyond just the fact that it, like, looks way cool, is uh, the fact that VHS is like a sort of aesthetic intervention, right? Like, when people see it, they immediately recognize it, but then they also immediately go, whoa, like, this is not of our time. This is of a different time. And that's very intentional for me, right? It, it pulls people out of the present moment, and it gives them this sort of mm, prismatic look at the now. You know, it's, it's not here and it's not then, so it makes you ask, when? <laughs> so, I, uh, <laughs> this is me. Um, yeah, I see my art as a kind of like mystical in, in dialogue with the internet. Um, even my, my screen name that I go by, The Sarah Show, is something I came up with when I was like, nine years old to use on AOL Instant Messenger. And I started creating my first animated GIFs around that time. So it'd be very accurate to say that I'm a web native artist. Uh, but I also think bringing in that old medium, right, of VHS was sort of the last of the analog mediums. It's a way of dialoguing with this, this shift that I have experienced in my lifetime. And, uh, you know, my art has, has obviously evolved quite a bit since I was nine years old. But I see each new artwork as like a sort of episode in this ongoing broadcast that is called The Sarah Show. So, NFTs. That's what we're all here for. That's what we want to talk about. I, uh, you know, have known about NFTs for a while. I actually found out about them uh, around 2014 when there were experiments being done at Rhizome and the New Museum in New York City. And I saw those, and at that time, you know, I'd been doing like primarily digital and screen-based art since 2011, and it was just like, oh my God, like this is amazing. Because prior to digital art, I had been a photographer. And, um, as a photographer, I had this experience of, of you know, doing what photographers do, of, of editioning my artwork as prints. That's, that's a very common practice for artists. So when I saw these artists experimenting with NFTs, those early NFTs, I was like, this is gonna be a game changer for, for me and for artists like me. This is like, this is gonna blow the world wide open. So I was just kinda like, you know, eagle-eyed, waiting for like, when is this technology gonna be available to me? And uh, it became available, I found Super Rare. And here we go, this is, this is my Genesis token. It's called 5D Fabric. I minted it on April 4th, 2019 on Super Rare. So coming up on three years here. And 
why I love this piece as like my Genesis token is I think it's a really great statement about what I'm always kind of chewing on with my work. It's, it's getting into this notion of the fabric of space-time itself. And part of how I'm doing that in this piece is with the use of video feedback, which uh, is, it's a very important tool in my toolkit. And you can see it. This is also a form of video feedback in this piece. Um, and it's very prominently used here, right? I, I have all these ways I have like tamed this chaotic thing that is video feedback, which if you're not familiar with it, it's like when you point a camera at a TV that's picking up the feed from that camera. That's how you create a feedback loop. And I've just played with this for years, right? And in this piece, I, I use that technique to create this like medallion-like structure, right? With, with these arcane kind of markings on it because I knew that this piece was going to be token number one on the foundation smart contract. Um, it was minted last January, token number one there. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of speaking to why I like video feedback. It's, it's speaking to this idea uh, that video feedback is a visualization of recursion itself, right? It's, it's a complete system, and yet it's always evolving. So it's a paradox, right? How can both of those things be true? And why I'm like using this in my work so often these days is I think that that mirrors how we're experiencing time, right? Like we're sort of sitting right at this parabola shift of technology where everything feels like it's both speeding up and slowing down all at once. And I think about it and I think that Blockchain is sort of like this ancient form of a future technology. It's, it's speaking to that experience of time, and it's letting us begin to document things, like our artwork, uh, for the long now, for this new way in which we're going to experience time. We are the ancients of a future civilization. And, uh, you know, to that end, I think that we are all having this experience of being self-transcending. And uh, this piece is a piece of mine, it's a video painting style that I created to be part of Natively Digital, which was the first curated NFT sale at Sotheby's, which was last summer. And this piece is working with a topic that I'm always kind of chewing on which is that I see the internet as the functional extension of the human nervous system. I think that as we are beginning to merge with our technology, it is redefining our notion of what it is to be human. And, and, and nothing has made that more clear to us than the past two years, right? Like We have had to experience life mediated through our technology in a very different way the past two years. So we're beginning to like expand past our previously held borders, both psychic borders and physical borders. We're having this moment of self-transcendence. So, <laughs> the thing about the NFT space and being here, you know, for several years at this point, I, uh, I get asked, I get asked by people, like, how? How do I engage with this meaningfully? And um, I think this piece of mine <laughs> is probably a good reminder for people. These are the immortal words of the Cheshire Cat, welcoming Alice to Wonderland. Most everyone's mad here, you know? Um, this is a new space, right? Still, it's still very new, it's still forming, and it's almost like the way new land forms through volcanic activity. It's intense, and volatility can be expected, right? There's volatility of price movement, there's volatility of cultural shifts, there are even volatile people. And um, it can be taxing for artists, right? I think we're, by nature, very sensitive people. And so 
I have come to find, as I am still here, still doing this, still making these visions go out into the world, that when the waves get big, those are the moments when you learn to surf, right? You, you see what's happening and you learn that there is an ebb and flow to everything. There's an up and down. To everything, there is a season. And there are ways that you can help yourself contend with that. Um, my number one piece of advice is that you got to make friends. It's, it's a big space. There's a lot going on. And finding friends is, is crucial, really, to your ongoing mm, success and to your ongoing sense of thriving. Um, and I'd also tell people that uh, you have to just sort of dedicate yourself to developing your own voice, right? that if you do that, uh, it might take a little longer. I know for myself, it, it took a while to develop support for my work. It's, it's unusual. It is from Planet Sarah, right? It's, you're going to see artists today, and you've seen artists today. Our work is all over the place. It's all different kinds of stuff. And um, I have found, though, that the people who experience the most sort of benefit from participating in this space are the ones who have dedicated themselves to developing their voice and committing themselves to meaningful, steady growth. Because that's the way that you mitigate the risk of getting washed away with the tide. So to that end, as I mentioned, you know, the artists here, as you've already seen, our, our practices are rich, they are vibrant, they are, they are varied and beautiful. Uh, I, I often say that crypto art has a unity of spirit and not a unity of style. And to me, that spirit is well represented by this piece of mine, Prometheus Fire, which is from a, a recent Nifty Gateway drop of mine. Uh, about stealing the fire from the gods so that the humans may use it. Because this piece speaks to the notion of self-sovereignty. That's the ethos we share here, right? We share this desire to make artists and make all people be more empowered within their own lives. And I think that that is something that is nuanced. So. It kind of gets lost when the media reports on NFTs. They, they want to grab that quick story. They want to say, it's all JPEGs and speculators. And it's not, as you've seen today. I mean, there is incredible artwork, incredible cultural movements happening here. And it's all being fueled by this fire of self-sovereignty. So <laughs> this is my latest piece. <laughs> So on that note, that's a lot to digest, I know. It's a lot of heady stuff, but humor and the ability to laugh at oneself is crucial. Um, so here I am, right? I stand before you, the queen of the dark side. <laughs> this is me. Um, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro, as Hunter S. Thompson once said, and uh, my baby's, she's gone pro. <laughs> um, so this piece is actually on uh, exhibition right now in Dubai with Christie's uh, and is <laughs> delightfully going to be, thank you, thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, yeah, delightfully I've chosen this piece. I created it to be my, the, mark my third crypto anniversary. So it's coming to Super Rare here in about a week. And the thing about this piece, the thinking behind it, right, is that I'm just thinking about how we are living through such extraordinary times, right? Like, our technology is advancing so rapidly, and our precious little brains are, like, really struggling to keep pace with it. So there's been backlash. There has been uh, a lot of backlash and a lot of anger directed at artists who are engaging with NFTs. and. Um, you know, I think that there's, uh, there's a lot behind it, right? The thing about NFTs is they're still a very new technology. They are still developing. They are still inelegant and inefficient in many ways, right? But to me, as I've experienced it, I think that the anger is coming out of fear. You know, it's coming out of fear of the future, and it's coming out of a fear that is being brought up 
by all the psychedelic questions about value that are being asked by what we're doing. And um, I just see it as the role of artists to shine a light into the darkness. That is our role. We shine the light out ahead of us so that everyone can see just a little bit better where we're all heading. And that's what this piece is about for me. This is my alter ego, the light witch. But in this piece, she is indulging her shadow side. She is indulging the shadow, and she is laughing maniacally at this role that people would cast her in uh, for being dark-sided, for daring, for daring to play with this new fire. And uh, yeah, that's my statement going into my third year of crypto art. So in conclusion, everybody, what I want to leave you with is this idea of, of be not afraid. You know, um, NFTs are this fascinating space. And I would say to people, don't let the noise, don't let the critiques dissuade you from participating and questioning and engaging and improving this thing that we've been building. Because what we're trying to do here is build the tools of tomorrow with the tools we have today. And so, in conclusion, I bid you, be not afraid. <laughs>